Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. When I first backed Star Citizen in 2014, there were a couple aspects that really piqued my interest. Yes, the promise of a seamless universe was cool. Procedural planets weren't even a thing yet, but I guess that would have been interesting too. The ships were pretty, the FPS component was a bonus, and this growing community was great. Above all of these, the PvP ship combat, and specifically, the way the flight simulation code was being implemented, was most fascinating to me. Historically, all games use code to model movement and physics, but not the way Star Citizen does. This video is most exciting for me, as I have a unique opportunity as a content creator. John Pritchett is releasing a fully detailed rundown of IFCS, which is Star Citizen's intelligent flight control system. He's allowed me to do what I do and summarize it in a video for you. Not from what I've researched, but directly from the man who designed it. I've enjoyed numerous conversations with John over the years. As the creator of the flight control systems for the game that I make content for, his insight into the complexity and challenges has been invaluable to my understanding. I have the original document linked in the description for you, and thank you, John, for sharing this exclusive opportunity with us. So with that, let's begin. Welcome to Understanding IFCS from the man who made it. Intelligent Flight Control System is a realistically modeled control system that assists the pilot operating a spacecraft within Star Citizen's flight simulation. Our flight simulation is a 6 degree of freedom, rigid body Newtonian model. Ship motion is induced by its thrusters and each individual thruster acts on the body by generating a limited amount of force at its mount point. The thrusters apply force relative to the ship's center of mass, resulting in applied torque on the ship. The resulting sum of all the forces will determine the ship's linear and rotational acceleration at any moment. This exact description is why I backed Star Citizen to begin with. I saw and still see the value in a simulator over a game. A great simulator offers a situation where all of the time you invest flying each ship will allow you to learn their specific traits and their limits. Modeling as a simulation means that as you introduce gravity, interference or take damage, the ship will react realistically, not because a programmer added a modifier, but because the ship is physically limited by its environment. Real pilots rely on control systems to translate their input into an appropriate motion. This is also true for Star Citizen. Control Logic IFCS consists of multiple components. The first is pilot input, which supports controlled variables for all six degrees. The system also considers many other factors as part of the total flight solution, which will all have an impact on the control logic. The result is a set of goal motion profiles for both linear and rotational control. These are used to determine the acceleration needed to achieve the desired motion. There are more systems which constantly compare desired motion versus actual path. These will update the thruster output and vector in real time. So I think you can see IFCS is constantly fighting to move your ship in the direction and rotation based on your input. At the heart of this system is the complete real-time simulation which accounts for the mass of the individual components that make up your ship. This is the simulated total mass and the center of gravity. The center of gravity being calculated in real time is critical to correctly represent the physics. Losing a wing to damage would reduce the mass in that area. That would alter the total mass and also your center of gravity. Firing missiles or expending ballistic ammunition also reduces the mass and would also alter the center of gravity. As a pilot, it might be unreasonable to control each thruster independently. IFCS is a full set of codependent control systems working together. Acceleration control is the most basic form of ship control. Pilot input is interpreted as a percentage of the maximum available acceleration on each control axis. The available acceleration is determined by the collective pool and then considered against the ship's current mass and moment of inertia. Currently, acceleration control is used for decouple mode linear control. Velocity control. This is a simplified control mode where pilot input is interpreted as a percentage of maximum allowed velocity for each control axis. IFCS calculates the optimal acceleration to achieve the requested change in velocity. Currently, velocity control is used for coupled and decoupled rotational control, coupled throttle control, and coupled strafe control. Positional control. This is the simplest pilot control mode where input is interpreted as either a goal position or goal rotation. This is provided through a waypoint system as a series of goal positions in three dimensions. For linear control, IFCS will calculate the acceleration profile needed to ramp up to a cruising velocity and then maintain. The system will maintain until there's a need to zero the velocity as the ship arrives at the goal position. Currently, this positional and rotational control is used for all automated ship control, including AI movement, 
automatic takeoff and landing, quantum alignment, and eventually linear control for large ships. The complexity involved in achieving a desired motion in each of six different control axes simultaneously using model thrust is very significant. When fully operational and working as intended, IFCS greatly simplifies the task, allowing the pilot to focus on what they want to do rather than how to do it. It's important to point out that IFCS is not the flight model, but a control system that assists the player to control a ship within Star Citizen's realistic Newtonian flight simulation. IFCS has several control modes to determine how the inputs are translated into motion. Coupled mode. Coupled mode in Star Citizen is a traditional nose forward flight model similar to aerodynamic flight. The pilot controls the ship's rotational velocities via pitch, roll, and yaw. The throttle indicates what velocity the ship should maintain on its nose forward direction. In addition to the rotational velocities and throttle, Coupled mode also supports strafe allowing the pilot to set a velocity goal in three linear axes. Decoupled mode. Decoupled mode in Star Citizen is a hybrid between coupled flight and full six degrees of freedom acceleration control. As the name implies, this mode decouples the rotation of the ship from its linear velocity. Because of this, the throttle is no longer used. The strafe inputs are interpreted as acceleration levels on each linear axis rather than velocity control. Rotational control is identical to that of coupled mode. Comstab. Comstab or command level stability is an assistance mode intended to help novice pilots to control their velocity during a turn to avoid a slide. When a ship is turning, Comstab will slow the ship down to ensure it has sufficient lateral or vertical thrust to avoid sliding. G4 safety. G4 safety mode is an assistance mode intended to help pilots avoid loss of consciousness from G force during extreme maneuvers. Like traction control on a car, it accomplishes this by limiting the force output to a safe level regardless of how much input the pilot's called for. G4 safety will also attempt to prevent self-injury by mismanaging the input on your craft. Boost Boost is an enhanced acceleration mode. When boost is active, all thrusters on your ship are given additional thrust at the cost of boost fuel. Boost is not specific to any particular type of control. The increase in thrust can be used anytime a pilot needs more performance to pitch, roll, strafe, or even to stop quicker. If you're being outmaneuvered in a dogfight, boost will increase your rotational speed. If you're interdicted by a rogue asteroid while exiting quantum, boost will also help you avoid a collision. Afterburner modes. Afterburner is a mode that allows the pilot to increase the top speed of the ship to escape an engagement or travel a large distance at higher than SCM. ESP. ESP stands for Enhanced Stick Precision. It's a combat assistance mode. It's used when tracking a target with fixed weapons. This is achieved by comparing the actual motion against the calculated optimal tracking solution. The goal of this system is to seamlessly enhance the pilot's input rather than take control and fly the ship. ESP will assist by bringing the aiming reticle over the target without overshoot. It's not as easy as it sounds. IFCS control is made up of multiple subsystems each tasked with managing one small part of the overall motion control solution. Linear and rotational pilot control were covered earlier. Translational stability can be seen as anti-slide or drift control. This system will try to maintain an ideal nose forward motion. Changing direction in space always needs to be offset by a new force. IFCS will apply forward thrust to compensate for the loss of forward velocity in the turn. IFCS will also apply lateral or vertical thrust needed to compensate as long as sufficient thrust is available. This is why some ships drift more than others in certain situations. Rotational stability can be seen as anti-tumble or tumble control. This subsystem is tasked with generating the counter torque needed to maintain the ideal rotational motion about its axis. The ships in general are designed such that an alignment of the ship's primary axis and the principal axis of inertia should not be in alignment. If this alignment occurs, the ship tends to tumble. Without rotational stability, the ship would tumble as it rotates. Gravity compensation is a subsystem to aid in dealing with gravity. This subsystem uses VTOL thrusters if available to offset the constant pull of gravity. If the ship doesn't have them, the maneuvering thrusters are going to be used to generate the thrust needed to compensate for the gravity. So you'll see from that example that if a thruster is already tasked to 40% just to hover, your usual vertical performance would be reduced by 40%. This might burn fuel quickly and overheat systems. There are some big implications here to consider. 
A standard freelancer needs to lift itself plus the cargo to take off. If you plan to take off from planet A with a full load at 0.5G, your landing destination at planet B better not be at 1.5G or you'll just thunder in. I think a good pilot may only need to make that mistake once in their career. Drag compensation is used when the ship is operating within an atmosphere. IFCS will use the thrusters to compensate for the expected drag. If the system didn't do this, the pilot would always experience reduced performance in this environment. You can clearly see how this all-encompassing IFCS system accounts for so much more than you might expect from a video game. By modeling and accounting for the cross-section, John has allowed IFCS to correctly modify flight changes due to the ship's aerodynamic shape. Each of our ships have a unique shape. Each shape would have a unique coefficient of drag and potentially lift which could be evaluated by IFCS in the future. Speed regulation is that system which imposes the artificial limit on linear velocity of a ship. This subsystem generates a corrective thrust to prevent the ship from exceeding the speed cap for any reason. John states that his desire is to allow all pilots to enable or disable all flight systems as they like, except for speed regulation which would need to be strictly enforced. The propulsion control system has been expanded to include more than just thrusters. Other methods have unique requirements that needed to be modeled uniquely. The PCS devices are divided into two categories. The first is a point force generator, the most common being a thruster. Gravlab pads fall into this category, but in the future, propellers, fans, or aerodynamic lifting bodies could also be incorporated. The second is a torque generator. A pair of thrusters positioned correctly is all you need to generate torque. Over two years ago, we were shown a procedural planet on ATV. Adding planets to the game created a complete new set of requirements. The atmospheric flight model resulted from the need to model both a space sim and a flight sim, plus all the stuff in between. Star Citizen's flight model was adjusted to support the aerodynamic forces. Dragon Star Citizen will be modeled by taking into consideration density, velocity, center of pressure, cross-sectional area, and a coefficient. Atmospheric density can be varied based on many criteria in the future, but for now it's generally dependent on your altitude. John would like to introduce lift in the future. This would be the vertical force created by the shape of the craft. It's not yet part of the system. In-atmosphere turbulence is also currently a placeholder. The flight model can realistically represent turbulence once weather and density are implemented. Burn-in is seen when entering an atmosphere. High-velocity objects will burn in as friction is applied to them from the atmosphere. It's currently an added visual effect, however the model is capable of representing it. If this was modeled accurately, our ships would never demonstrate a burn-in as they never reached the required velocity. Terminal velocity is the point where the acceleration and the resistance are neutral. It depends on many of the factors that we just went over, however terminal velocity mostly depends on drag, density and gravity for free-falling objects, and thrust versus drag for flight. The final component of atmospheric flight that I'm going to cover today is safe velocity. Every ship in Star Citizen has a velocity at which the drag forces are deemed too extreme for the structure. In an atmosphere, a spaceship that looks like a plane is going to have fewer difficulties than a spaceship that looks like a spaceship. Plane-like spaceships are going to benefit from a much higher limit. As I mentioned before, they may in the future also benefit from lift, which would greatly offset the need for constant output from the lifting thrusters. Going back, I remember reading some very old posts from the Kickstarter when people were super critical that all the ship looked like airplanes. Luckily now, after planets have been added, we have a legitimate reason to explain the design choices. I'd like to close with a message for John Pritchett. Thank you, sir, for dreaming up this fantastic construct. As I said in my intro, the audacious and all-encompassing flight model was likely the component that got me most involved in 2014. Many games just fudge it, and the fact that you wouldn't impressed me. To the viewers, I would ask you to follow the link to John's original document. It was impossible for me to convey all of the specific details and nuances contained in it. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. I'd ask you to share the video with your friends and orgmates so that we can all have a greater understanding of IFCS and our flight model. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.